Guys, welcome to TGS. Today, we're gonna to discuss whether this is outdated technology and whether we should all be shooting these. They're frowned upon in certain circumstances, which I think is mostly snobbery. I believe so. At the end of the day, you're gonna kill something, you're gonna kill it. I know you maybe have more opportunity with this, but if you only put two in it, I mean, if that was a regular tube length, you'd definitely be on a slightly more level plane. <laughs> definitely so. But before we start, let's make some noise. You know Look the downside. how shiny my end is and oily. You have cleaned your Benelli. You see, before we start, I'm gonna to get to my main point nice and quick to save people time. I love semi-automatics. I think they are better in just about every way. Price point, you can buy the best semi-auto in the world for clay shooting. Let's say Beretta's top of the line semi-auto is two and a half thousand. Yep. Their top of the line clay gun, 10,000. They are much better value, pound for pound. They are convenient to use, they're low recoil. There is very little bad about them. However, you don't see people shooting in high-end competitions with them. So I reckon they must be limited for clays somehow. And maybe that's just in max weight, but that there you go, I've just got that off my chest. Now I'm gonna make some noise, just shut up for a minute. Indeed. Yeah, let's work through and shoot them, shall we? That came out quite fast. I didn't send you a second one. You knew. Didn't have any carriage for it. If you'd had 10 shots, you'd have had another carriage. Let's go <laughs> A on report B. See, suddenly you're winning with the fact All that- All of a sudden, semi-auto is winning. You don't have to break your gun open to reload it. There's so much benefits to a semi-auto. Isn't there just, when you're this in a pigeon height, be... you don't get it caught in the net because you don't have to break it. I really started today hoping to have a fair fight and all I've done is sold myself down the river already as a massive semi-auto fan. Maybe I'll miss them all and that'll cause it. I doubt it. Thing is, they're so easy to show. My thing to counter what I've just said is the engineering and building that goes into something like this is. Most over and unders of a certain quality are a thing of beauty. Not very often do you find a semi-automatic that is a thing of beauty. No. You can have a thing of construction and manufacturing, but not really a thing of beauty. No, you know, with the exception of perhaps Cosme and the Benelli Magnifico, most of the semi-automatics are just a tool. Work. Go. Yes, they're a hammer, as you would say. Exactly that. Yeah, I mean, you have to admit, the trigger pulls are better. They're, the construction is definitely of a nicer and superior quality in over and under because you can't make a semi-automatic trigger quite this nice. You just can't. No, but does it shoot clays as well? That is the question. Are we just snobby that we like over and unders more than semi-automatics? Or Because it, it's not a safety thing, because we, we've all got over that, and yet you still don't see high-end shooters shooting a semi-automatic out of choice. And you see them shoot them for a bit of fun and occasionally, but it's never their go-to gun. Is it because the good people get given free guns and they want the expensive guns? No, I don't think that's entirely true. Although there is obviously uh, impetus on certain gun makers to push over and unders because they are a higher price point. Yeah. But at the same time, there's a lot more work to building them. A on report B. Thank well, so know. far, it's just as good as an over and under. <laughs> the mess on the floor, I could live without that. I think a bottom ejecting semi-automatic would yeah, be preferable. Yeah, but you can get the little bags that go on the side that catch your cartridges. A, a semi-automatic colostomy bag. Yeah. Semi-automatics can't hit clays. They just there we can't go. hit anything, they're terrible. Must be. Because I've just been wangling around with a 20 bar in my hand, handling a real big boy's gun I mean, is that, a little bit difficult for me. That is a, a Benelli, it's not a big boy's gun. It's superbly light and whippy, and in fact, much more like your 20 bore than anything else. Oh, shut up, Dad. Let's go. Is that a full choke? That's an extra full choke, yeah. That's probably why I'm having a little bit of difficulty hitting <laughs> some of these close targets. Why don't we shoot more semi-automatics? I don't know, mate. So, you know, this is my personal Benelli. You made it for me. I've stuck it all right, together so for I, me. I stuck a tube on it for you. Yeah, you stuck a tube on it for me and Teague kindly gave me the choke for it. I use it day in, day out. It rides around in the truck with me. It's my go-to gun because it's made out of plastic. I'm not gonna damage it. It works and it works and it works even when I don't clean it. 90% of the time, it works. But we've also established that a 686 platform or a Browning Maruku platform will do the same thing. It will, but do you think it'd still look as clean as that if it had rolled around in my truck for the last two years? No, no. But then I still can't come up with a good answer as to why when there's some amazing options out there in semi-automatic, people don't use them. Is it just because you don't want to jam and certainly in competition scenarios, no, jams aren't likely nowadays. I don't, I don't get it. There was three occasions people had jams in front of us. 
in a competition. Yeah, but that's just buying appropriate shells, isn't it? Let's be honest. Most yes. people don't. I think you can buy any old over and under, and for the most part, just stick whatever you want through it. A semi-automatic actually might require you to buy an appropriate shell. In fact, I know over time there's been two or three models of semi-automatic that were released that needed a very specific type of shell. In fact, two of them are bottom ejecting. And they failed because people bought the cartridge, they put it in the gun, and it goes, bang jam. And that's not good enough. No. But but the quality, of semi -automatics now, the quality of semi-automatics now is so much better and so much more reliable with lighter shells than it ever has been. So maybe it's time. Maybe it's time to go to the competition with semi-automatics. So is it a cultural thing? I must, definitely must just be think a cultural thing. It's a cultural thing. I've got money on it. It's the same thing as going side by sides with true game guns. If you don't shoot side by side with a, with a if you don't shoot a game yeah, bird, they're with they're not as easy to shoot and not as hard lasting as an over and under. But in many cases, in many yeah. cases. So then, similarly, now we're moving on to maybe semi-automatic time. Perhaps it could be time to shoot those with semi-automatic to a high standard. It could be time to maybe take them out into the field and use them a little bit more. The Americans certainly use them a lot more than we do in the field, for sure. I yeah. mean, as a field gun, they make an awful lot more sense. They do. Higher capacity of shots, even, let's say, legally restricted to three in many hunting scenarios. You're not disadvantaged. No. Nope. In fact, you're extra advantaged. You've got another 50% death chance. <laughs> and with you and I, that's really important to increase your capacity for hitting. There's a big difference in how you shoot both these guns. There is. And this sure. is a, a very much an aggressive point where you want to kill it pull the trigger and, and treat it mean. Yeah, there is no tracking the line, and I think no. that is probably the biggest reason there's no success there. You can't shoot the semi-automatic with that grace. 32 that inch grace. feel that is, is the best way to kill targets consistently, yeah. consistent moves, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's not built for that. No. But it can still do it. It can do it if you, if, you, if you put your mind into it, but the best way to shoot it is just with that sheer aggression, get in there, point it in the right place. See it, kill it. See it, kill it, and get out of there. Whereas, like you say, with your over and unders, you've got that graceful movement, that pick up point, hold point, kill point. And that's how you win, and that's how you kill more pheasants, and that's how you shoot better. So we probably answered the question there. However, they do make guns in semi-automatic format that do just this. A lot of it comes back to a safety argument, potentially, that an over and under is very easy from 150 yards, 200 yards to see me like that. Yep. But I don't know, seeing as we are all trusting each other to be good and safe people, whether that's enough of a reason not to bring semi-automatics into popularity. But you can, with guns, we all know, only takes one mistake to get somebody dead, right? It doesn't matter what you're doing in what scenario you're in, that could still go wrong at some point with the wrong person behind it, even with the right person behind it, and a complete accident. And this is much more idiot proof in that scenario. Definitely. A double gun is much more idiot proof than a semi-automatic or a pump action. And we've all seen the videos on YouTube, people doing stupid stuff with guns and getting in trouble. And I put money that there isn't one, uh, there's probably one, but 99% of them are with autos and pumps. And I don't think, I, I mean, a lot of them are also in America. So let's, let's just put that to one side, but perhaps I think with the adequate training, there shouldn't be any issues. But at the same time, I appreciate what you're saying, that the potential for any disastrous consequence is higher with misuse of one of those. I'd agree with that. However, I would also like to put the point out there that I think it's as a multifunctional shotgun to tackle anything with, they're also hands down better in most scenarios. I think perhaps there is also a, a uh, reliability element. This is a lot easier to fix in the field. And if it goes wrong, it goes click, you just break it open, take one out, put another one in, Go try again. again. One of those with a jam, a double feed, could potentially be a five minute strip down. Yeah, it's a five minute strip down, it takes a bit more to work, it takes a bit more to clean. I just, I, I am just stood here fully prepared for this video and now actually sitting here probably overindulging in the research and the thought process realizing that there are very few good reasons that we don't all just shoot semi-automatics. Nope, I can't see one. I use it day in day out and I love it a bit. Q and American commenting, 
we all use semis, you're just going on about it. But in high-end clay shooting, or in most clay shooting, an over and under is the choice. In most game shooting in England, an over and under is the choice. When was the last time somebody won a world championship or a major competition with a semi-automatic well, that I wasn't designed for semi-automatic? Cue a comment. Somebody will know. Let's get one in somebody's hand. Get somebody to win one. You see, I've seen people do well with them, but just never as well as an over and under. And I presume that's just a, a balance and weight thing. Maybe so. Maybe but, so. Yeah. People have tried, but no one's done it yet. And if they have, it's the exception to the rule. And it's been swept under the rug. <laughs> Nobody tells us about it. So having just shot it with your gun, and which is completely way oversized for me, after shooting it with my semi, I just straightened it, piece of pee, and not because of the fact that I know how to shoot it now, because I was still struggling to find the lines and everything. That connected with me so much better. The line was easier, the control was easier, the brake was cleaner. It must just be a weight thing. But well, let's see if it works for you. Barrel weights for a semi. I mean, maybe there's a video there. We made the ultimate clay shooting semi automatic, which I think is already made in the UGB 25 XL if they worked. But an eight and a half pound semi automatic, it should be a recipe for success. But yet nobody is doing it. Nobody's no. buying them. Nobody's into it. And I guess that's just an image thing. It must just be snobbery. I mean, it's definitely more fiddly to load. The, the loading process is not so sweet for, let's say, a pre-shot routine or something like that. Mate, you shot that like an absolute wizard. I know you like that gun anyway. You've I mean, always, you've I'm always a tried to steal it. I'm fan. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> you've always tried to steal it off me every time I have it. You shot it like a demon, and the kills were phenomenal through that choke, <laughs> like I mean, dust. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty tasty machine. It doesn't shoot as well. No. But it clearly does. It needs to be shot differently, and that differently doesn't translate into higher scores. It, it perhaps doesn't translate into better hunting. But to shoot it instinctively, I take that every day. Like the speed and the power you can put behind that thing just to move it a foot like that, bang. I'd love to see in the comments who why people think it's such a taboo thing to use a semi-auto. Why? What is the reasoning? I, it must just be... Everybody's going to have reasons. I know there's going to be 10 different reasons which we've all heard before, but surely there's got to be somebody out there that has got a different reason for me. A genuine one. A genuine reason, not just, oh, it doesn't look right, oh, it's not respectful. We've heard all that before. Because the A400, in a big heavy spec, is one of the better clay guns out there, and you can pick it up for under 2,000. Yeah. That is a bargain. Yeah. That's an absolute bargain. Well, somebody who's actually good at clays, not like me and Johnny, but somebody who's actually good at clays, tell us why you don't use an auto. Or why you do, and what scores you get. Maybe there's never going to be a move. Maybe it is just snobbery. Maybe it is the fact that the top boys use X, Y, and Z, and that's why we use them. And a lot of them aren't sponsored. A lot of them buy that product. I guess a lot of it as well. To be good, you're investing an awful lot of money in clays and practice. And by that point, the cost of the gun is kind of... Neither here nor there. Doesn't matter, does it really? By the you time know, you're investing that number of cartridges and clays each week. A good American good. friend put in 10,000 practice shells over the winter. That's three months. 10,000 practice shells. And that's nothing compared to some of the boys, I wouldn't imagine. Yeah. I mean, maybe you can wear a semi automatic out, but I, I've tried. Yeah. I, I got rid of I did the old one, didn't I? We had to scrap a. Yeah, but come on, what was it? It was a Bakel MP153, three and a half inch Magnum. And 10 years of hard abuse just oh, ten years managed of, to 10 get 10 years that of right. solid gamekeeping, non-cleaning it, driving over it with a truck, but to, generally abusing it, and it worked until the day it but, didn't. But it was never good when you bought it because it was a Bakel. <laughs> hey, don't you swear about her. She did well. Why don't they use them? What is better? I. 13 years in the gun trade and many years of shooting beforehand and over years and even having made a video explaining the differences and what's good and what's bad about them in the past still quite haven't figured it out obviously it's horses for courses and there's a lot of snobbery in game shooting in the uk where you can't shoot a semi-automatic and they'll say it's for safety reasons when it's not because after i peg the guns in a slip then you walk off and you come back the guns out of a slip and who's to say when you see people standing around tiger hunting on peg yeah 
that I'm less safe than you. It's, it's a very tough one to argue out. For a hunting gun, you save a lot of weight, you gain a lot in your 50% extra chance of shooting something. They are perhaps easier to load, although they're slightly more complicated. Look, I don't know, I, I really don't know. The physical differences apart, I don't understand why nobody has cracked the clay market with a semi-automatic unless the real answer is that there is more money to be made out of over and unders, which there is. But I don't believe that to be the case. I don't believe. Uh, because surely... those coming into the market and not spending a lot of money are still buying an over and under. Yeah. Because it's easier to shoot, yeah. even though you can buy a semi-automatic that is easy to shoot. I mean, that's so easy to shoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it is. It's, um... well, not for you today. <laughs> <laughs> she has been in the back of the cupboard for a while. However, you know, for multiple uses, for a gun that serves multiple purposes, that has got the hands on my Beretta. It's got the hands on your long thorn. Oh, yeah. If so I why? had to have one gun for the rest of time, it would be a semi-automatic. Yeah. And that's, that's the odd thing. And yet, if I was to... It would probably cause me. <laughs> that's not really... doesn't really fall in the same bracket as all the others. <laughs> a little bit more expensive, Mike. However... Well, you know, if you can. You should. You should. Well, let's wrap it at that then. And on that massive bombshell of explaining nothing but asking tons of questions, please tell let us, what us you think. know your thoughts. Yeah. Are semi-automatics snobbed out of existence? Is there a gun apartheid that we don't know about or perhaps a part of? You tell me. No thoughts is actually here's the real reason that nobody wants a semi-automatic. Look at this. Uh, uh, yeah, especially when you get over 30, Mike. It's nobody. definitely not worth bending down. To and pick you, up empty carriages. You can have a magnet stick, but it's also just faff, isn't it? Ugh. Thank you for watching, guys. This channel is made possible by our amazing sponsors. You can find out more about them in the description down below. And if you want to support the channel, you can join as a member. You get loads of extra content, well, some extra content, and occasionally we hook up and go clay shooting together as a membership group. If you don't feel like joining today, we really appreciate you watching and subscribing. Have a wonderful day.